So we now have the animated hands and the fireball material. Let's now build this so the fireball spawns in between your hands when you press the buttons of both the motion controllers. So we'll do this in the level blueprint. So if you go to your current level and open level blueprint. So currently I, I've already made this. It's just easier this way if I kind of walk through it and I can explain what's going on. So to start off with, we'll have an event tick. So we're running through a few things here. We will have a sequence node as well because we're going to spawn the fireball. We're going to scale it as you adjust your hands and we're going to fire it. So event tick and then a sequence. And the first thing that we will do is we will spawn the fireball. So first we need to see if both of the, the buttons on the motion controllers are pressed. We want both of them to press, not just the one. So if you cast to your motion controller and then you can get the variables that we created in there previously of grab left pressed and grab right pressed. And if they are both pressed, then if statement true we can continue we can if false then not so if it is true do once because we're only going to spawn this fireball once we don't want it to kind of keep coming in on top of each other we'll do once and false should be reset so if it is completed then you can cast to the motion controller again the object being the get player pawn and let's find the spawn point between both of these motion controllers so get the left motion controller and the right motion controller from the motion controller pawn get world location from both of these and then to find the center point between two locations what you do is you add them both together and then you divide by two so get world location of the left controller, get world location of the right controller, add them together and divide it by two. And I've created a variable to keep track of this, what will now be called the spawn point. So the center position between both hands. So create a vector variable and call it spawn point, bring it in and set that to this location. And at the spawn point, we want to spawn actor by class. And that actor is the fireball that we created in the previous tutorial. And then if you split the location rotation, we'll set the spawn point to the location. And if you set the scale to zero, zero, and zero, because we're going to control the scale with the distance between the hands. So I just add the spawn point into location and then scale to zero, zero, zero. And what I have created here is a variable just to keep track of, is there a fireball currently spawned? So create a new variable, a boolean, drag it in and call it is spawned and set it to true. So that is how you spawn the fireball what we're going to do next is we're going to destroy it on release of one of the buttons just so we have full control over when it is um, in the scene so from the second pin of sequence let's cast to motion controller the object being get player pawn we will get the grab left and the right pressed variables from the motion controller and check if both of these are pressed if both are pressed great keep going if it is false and if there is currently a fireball spawned then let's destroy actor so again it's if both of them are pressed true nothing happens if they are not both pressed and there is a fireball spawned 
the Mets destroy the actor. And the actor is taken from here. It is when we spawned an actor, we just return value, bring that down to the actor that we want to destroy. And now we know that is spawned is set to false. Next up, we're going to scale. So if we add a pin and now we will scale. So is there currently a fireball spawned? If that is true, then let's, let's find the distance between the hands and use that to scale. So if it is true, let's cast two motion controller pawn, the object being get player pawn. We will get both of the motion controllers. So get motion controller L and get motion controller R. Get both of their world locations and subtract from each other. So that is the distance between both of the motion controllers. And we will set a vector length. So now we have a length as a float of the distance. And I've created a variable just to hold this and I've called it hand distance. And this is a float. So drag that in and the vector length between both of these controllers is the hand distance. And here we've used a map range clamped. This is to control the distance between the hands and align it to the scale of the fireball. So these numbers I found worked well. So between zero and 20 units of how much your, your hand distance is, the output to the scale of the fireball I have just one and zero. So zero, 20, one and zero. So let's get the, the fireball actor, get all actors of class fireball, get a copy of the plane. The plane is within the fireball. That is what the, the fireball material is on. We will set relative scale of the plane. So we just need to split this so it is three different float values and not one vector. So the return value of the clamp is the X, Y, and Z. So then finally, fire. So I've set up a new input here, fire. If we go into project settings and under engine, look into input, I've added this fire. So I currently map this to my Oculus Quest. You can map it to whatever button you have, you would like fire to be but I'm using the, the X on the left controller and the A on the right controller to, to fire the fireball. Then to go back in, so if I add fire, the input action, and I know that a fireball is spawned, I will get all actors of class, I will get the fireball, get the plane within the fireball, and I will set, I will simulate physics. So what we're doing is we're gonna add an impulse. So we're adding an impulse to the plane, to the fireball, to fire it, to shoot it out. So set physics to true. And then what I'm, I'm doing is to get the forward vector of which direction are we firing this. And what I'm doing is I'm going to get the forward vector of the left hand. So get all actors of class, get the motion controller, and get a copy of the left motion controller. So then we take the forward vector of the motion controller, the left, and then we just add impulse at location. So the target is the plane that is what's holding the fireball. The impulse is the forward vector from your left hand and the location is the spawn point where it originally spawned. So if we now compile and play, let's get in and try this out. Okay, 
here we are, I'm back in again. So, we have our hands, press it, you get the grab, the animate, grab both of them, and the fireball is spawned. The closer I move my hands, the bigger it gets, the further away, the smaller it gets. Bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller. And then if I press my button, boop, the fireball is fired. We've added an impulse to it. Now you've seen that there was an arc. We can fix that in a second. So you can see the fireball, and if I press, and it is added on an impulse in this direction. We used my left hand, so whichever way the left hand is facing, that's where it fires. So let's fix the the arc. That is just that's just gravity. So if we go to window world settings and override world gravity save and if we jump back in again here we go and now gravity isn't the problem so now it all seems to work work nicely cup spawn and fire Here we go. So if you've missed anything, just ask in the comments down below and I'll answer as quick as I can. I know it might have been hard to follow. It's just my first tutorial and the accent's a bit weird, but it works. Feel free to reach out. And in the meantime, I'll think of other fun little ideas, what we can do in VR and some special effects. So thanks very much and See you in the next video. Boop.